enjoyable uh, moment to be able to introduce Tingy. Uh, I knew Tingy at Bell Laboratories. Uh, Tingy was at Bell Laboratories for over 40 years and uh, can only be regarded as a pioneer and father of fiber optic communication. He, uh, uh, among his work, he uh, was among the first, or maybe the first, to show that uh, uh, a laser could work with an open resonator. Uh, so one of the early pioneers of laser research. In addition, he uh, was uh, uh, the father, basically, of repeater communication in terms of showing that optical fiber communication uh, could be enabled by the use of optical amplifiers. And, and so it has to be regarded as, as one of the uh, fathers of fiber optic communication and, and therefore uh, one of the people responsible for all the benefits we get from uh, fiber optic communication. Uh, he has, of course, um, extensive awards, a uh, member of the National Academy of Engineering. Um, I'd like to focus on the Edison Medal, which he received in 2009 for his efforts. Uh, for, for those of you unfamiliar, which I admit I was not perfectly familiar with what the Edison Medal represented, it's uh, one every year given, it's the most prestigious award uh, given by the IEEE. Uh, it is basically the top award. And uh, you can only get an idea for uh, what it means by looking at um, who uh, past recipients uh, of the Edison Medal are. Uh, Alexander Graham Bell, Tesla, Bodhi. Uh, he is in the, the company of these individuals. Um, these people that are uh, the, the main uh, pioneers and fathers of our field uh, of electrical engineering in general. So I'm very happy to welcome Tingy and uh, looking forward to his talk. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Keith, for your very kind words. Um, I'm very honored in, indeed uh, to be invited to give uh, this talk at uh, the uh, well-known, famous University of Delaware. I'd like to thank my uh, uh, old friend. He, he isn't really all that old. He's, he's not nearly as old as I, I am. But, but I've known him for a long time. Uh, Pro Professor Len Cimini, a real scholar and gentleman. Um, I've had uh, a, a very exciting, uh, my, my, the title of my talk uh, has to do with an, an excited uh, state. And I indeed, this morning I spent uh, several hours in an excited state, uh, listening to the work of various pro, 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 pro professors. Uh, in some ways, I'm envious of them uh, because uh, they're still young, they're doing very exciting work. And uh, I'm sure much of this work will lead to uh, great uh, contributions uh, to the uh, society. Uh, and so uh, right now, uh, I'm, I'm in a very happy state uh, being here. Now. Uh, as far as the uh, excitement goes, um, as uh, the, my, the title of my talk uh, indicates, I've spent uh, 41 years at AT&T Bell Labs uh, doing uh, strategic research and uh, innovation in the research department, uh, engaged principally in optical fiber communications. So uh, this uh, afternoon, uh, I'd like to uh, share with, with you uh, some of my observations and experiences of my uh, happy times at Bell Labs. So uh, first, I'd like to uh, define what is strategic re research and what is innovation, according to my understanding. Then I will tell you a little bit 
about the uh, AT&T and the old uh, Bell Labs. I say the old Bell Labs because right now there is a Bell Labs with Alcatel Lu Lucent, but it's only a small fraction of the old Bell Labs. The, uh, I will uh, say something about the management style and the research and environment at that time. Then I will uh, comment on optical uh, fiber con communications, uh, the research, and its management, the in particular management of innovation. Then I'll give some e examples uh, uh, about the transmission work, uh, the deployment, and uh, ultra pro project, which involves uh, high bit rate at the time. At the time, uh, eight uh, gigabits per, per second was re regarded uh, as ultra high speed. And the uh, coherent systems, as you know, uh, every single radio system uh, that we encounter are co uh, coherent systems. And indeed, in the 1980s, we ventured into coherent systems, but we quit that. We quit that because of optical amplifiers came along and WDM came along. I will say something about that. And I, I believe WDM, which stands for Wavelength Division Multiplexing, that, that, that is putting uh, many channels of different wavelengths onto a single fiber, is um, the one technology that really revolutionized uh, the uh, optical fiber uh, tra uh, transmission. Then I will comment on a pro project called Monet, uh, which was funded by uh, DARPA concerning optical uh, networking. Then I'll, uh, in conclusion, I will say something about the, the, the progress right now and uh, the work uh, that B uh, Bell Labs and other labs throughout the world are doing. So well, what uh, do I regard as strategic re research? The important word is strategic here. So I say strategic research uh, I regard as that it's mission oriented. It's not just some random research that you're doing. When you work for an industrial company, you should understand how does this company make its revenue? And that can be very broad. And in the case of a telephone uh, company, it may range from uh, the preservatives for telephone poles to integrated circuits, la la lasers, uh, signal pro processing, acoustics, psychology, and e economics. Can, so it can be very wide, but it, what you do should be, uh, uh, you, you, you should have a goal. And this is focused on producing, the word is, uh, again, significant advances, okay? and innovations in a particular field, what, well, whatever field you're in. So the, I say the effort can be fundamental or applied indeed to those days. Uh, uh, the uh, Bell Labs was very much involved in very fundamental work, in, be it in physics, chemistry, uh, mathematics, uh, psychology, acoustics, as, as, et cetera. Um, then, having realistic goals in mind, and at the, at the time where you're doing it, you should have a clear understanding of basic physical principles and appreciation for applications issues. That will help you to uh, form your own vision and uh, perhaps initiate your work. Then uh, people often uh, mouth the word in, in innovation. Now, innovation is not just a, an in, invention, a discovery, or a, uh, a formulation of a new con concept, but it's the process. The word, key word is the process. A process by which novel ideas and concepts are created and transformed. The key word is the word trans, transform into viable products. What does viable mean? It means some uh, pro product that will last it will compete with other uh, uh, applications or pro pro products. So in initially, uh, innovation can be a one-person or small group effort. 
But in a company such as AT&T, would evolve into a large scale and be institution supported, but it's grassroots ma managed. This is how AT&T was uh, different from some other company, per perhaps. It's grass, some of the innovation are grassroots generated and managed, and it's mission uh, or, or oriented, mission driven. Uh, it's a team and endeavor, motivated by, and, and every word counts here, a measurable, significant operational and economic gains. So you can probably uh, make calculations and predictions how, uh, for example, AT&T could save millions, perhaps billions of dollars by using this particular technology. <coughs> this uh, uh, is a um, cover of a magazine called Bell Labs Record in 1975 that I scanned. And um, in 1975, uh, uh, Bell Labs celebrated a 50th anniversary. So there was a, uh, a listing of the, uh, some of the uh, devices and components and systems that have been uh, in, in, innovated at Bell Labs, except for the airplane showing there. The airplane was there showing the start of mobile communications. But as you can see, sing, every single thing here, radio astronomy, uh, microwave, um, let's see now. Per, could, could we dim these lights? Um, this is micro, beginning of microwaves and uh, um, beginning of ra radio astronomy, all the uh, telephones involved, uh, coaxial cables, um, Telstar, that's 50 years now. Satellite con con uh, con communications, picture phone, which happened to be, uh, which happened to be un unsuccessful. At the, uh, but there's millimeter waveguide also has been overtaken by uh, optical fibers and la la lasers, etc. So uh, here, uh, I, uh, AT and T, when I joined. Uh, was the largest company in, in the world, and uh, not just um, in, in, in telecom. Indeed, it was larger than uh, all the uh, oil con con companies. And it was regulated by uh, the Federal con Communications con con Commission, but the U.S. government had granted it uh, a monopolistic uh, status. And it was vertically Integrated, as I mentioned, it manufactured all sorts of things, even going out to the forest, uh, 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 buying uh, t uh, telephone posts. And it uh, was vertically in in integrated. It had its own R&D lab, that's Bell Labs. It had uh, 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 the manufacturing uh, of uh, components and equipment, and it owned its uh, network and operated the net, net, net network and provided service from which it gained its revenue. And, our, and Bell Labs was the R&D arm of AT&T. So let's look at, uh, in, in the, in the uh, uh, 80, uh, in the 70 years or so that uh, uh, part of which that I, I, I was there. What are the, some of the notable ad achievements? The first of all, the fundamental con con concepts, negative feedback. Do some of the students uh, know who was the person who uh, uh, in innovated negative feedback? Now, the thing is, every single amplifier that we, we, we use nowadays, use negative feedback to, to, to stabilize its gain. So, so somebody tell, tell me, black. So if you didn't learn anything today, you have learned that black is the person who started, uh, who um, uh, conceived negative feedback. Noise, Johnson, 
okay? Circuit, Nyquist, and, and others I just named. Network, Bo uh, Bodhi, and, and others. And information theory, as you all know, Shannon. So these people are really the pioneers in the various theories that uh, form the uh, background of the of, uh, telecommunications. Then in uh, electronic devices and technologies, and I will just barely m mention, and you, can, you, you know who some of these people are, the transistors, the field effect uh, uh, transistor, solar cells, uh, Russell in, um, uh, in, in, in Homedale uh, back in the uh, uh, four, 440s, the non-volatile semiconductor uh, memory, the CCD uh, for which uh, uh, Smith uh, and Boyle uh, won the no no Nobel Prize in, 19, uh, in, in two, 2009, and of all sorts of signal pro processing uh, uh, te techniques. Then, uh, in my field, uh, photonic uh, the devices, uh, uh, there were pioneers in semiconductor lasers, in gas uh, la lasers, integrated optics, <coughs> Um, on modulators and for photonic in, in integrated circuits, as, et cetera. Then, of course, uh, Bell Labs uh, uh, contributed fundamentally to uh, tran tr transmission te technologies, including uh, virtually all the tra transmission technologies that we use today. Uh, coaxial cable, short wave, uh, pulse cold mo modulation, um, and Bob Lucky's automatic line equalizer, the undersea cable systems, microwave uh, transmission systems, satellite, um, millimeter wave, wave, wave waveguide, which was superseded by optical fibers, uh, mobile and call, which really changed uh, our uh, so, so society, uh, the, 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 the mobile and the cell concept was formulated by Doug Ring at uh, Home, home, home Dell back in the uh, uh, 50s, and of course optical uh, fiber. Then there was switching and systems and consumer uh, telephone systems. Uh, may I uh, tell you that the touch tone, the 8, 800 number, the direct distance dial, uh, dialing, the picture phone, which, which was not successful, uh, and the data phone, voice recognition, Etc. As etc. Now, through the en enlightened management and, um, and nurturing en en environment, Bell Labs spread 16 Nobel laureates. I believe uh, no uh, company uh, has beaten this record. There was Davison. Davison in uh, 1937 uh, in the newly established Bell Labs gotten the first Nobel Prize for his work on, um, uh, on electron diffraction by crystals. Then recently, uh, as I mentioned, Bill Boyle and George Smith for CCDs, Lachten Stormer Tsui on fractional quantum Hall effect, a Chu on, uh, uh, on uh, a cooling of a a a a atoms, uh, Osharov, shallow on microwave spectroscopy, uh, the Big Bang, uh, Anderson on uh, d d disorder systems, towns for lasers, ma masers, and of course, transistors. Now, I'll begin to talk about the working en en environment at Bell Labs. In the years that I was there, I joined Bell Labs in 57 and uh, retired uh, from actually AT&T Labs by that time. Uh, 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 AT&T and Lucent uh, had split. So in 1960 to 1996, uh, I uh, observed that all managers have technical background 
and broad in, in interest. Uh, most, not, most of them, if not every single one of them, uh, was well read. They have broad no, no, knowledge. They all uh, have uh, technical uh, backgrounds, and uh, there were no bean count counters there. The MTS, the uh, members of technical staff, the, uh, were given, the, uh, in fact, at lunchtime we, we, we talked about that, very wide la 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 latitude to work in the mainstream of the, the, uh, the company. That's the business of telephone. So it ranged, again, as I mentioned, from chemistry to uh, economics to mathematics, physics, chemist, uh, physics, uh, systems, as, et cetera, as, as, et cetera. But uh, while you're given very wide la 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 latitude, you must do work to earn your keep. That, 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 that is, you have to have in mind uh, the uh, bottom line of the, the, the company, how your work contributes to uh, the growth and the uh, revenue of AT&T. May it be next year or 20 years from, 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 from now. Furthermore, you, you need to uh, sometimes educate your uh, bosses, your, your management, and what you are working on will lead to that direction. This is very uh, important, sharing of in, in, in information. Perhaps uh, at universities uh, years ago, uh, this was not quite true. Each professor has his or her uh, do domain. You tend not to uh, share as, as much. But now I do believe that uh, in, in, in universities, there's quite a bit of sharing and cross-disciplinary uh, uh, work. And that uh, was very important uh, in, in the in, in industry. Then the uh, innovation pro process was pa pa participated by the MTSs. So the grassroots pa pa participation. And the, on the other hand, the, the management would award the top and widen the salary spread. And this is very important. The best are really awarded well. And sometimes it's a zero-sum game. So you take away from those people who don't perform well and give it to the people who per perform well so that the spread in increases. Okay. It was not a democracy. We were not taxing the rich here. We give it to, to, to the rich. Not a good thing to say now, uh, nowadays. And for the management of research direction, as well as the progress and budgeting needs, the management seek um, the input from the MTSs. So it's a bottom-up input. On the other hand, for the management of development pro pro, uh, projects, that is developing components or systems for production, then the top, it was a top-down uh, uh, management. But the schedules uh, and the goals were set with, uh, ra rationally uh, with uh, uh, fair uh, timeline and milestones. So I regard this as the principle of support and inspire, rather than control and perspire. When you control, and the controller and the controlee perspire a lot. So now I'm going to talk about uh, the uh, examples which I will cite. Um, as uh, you all know, I don't need to spend much time on this slide. Uh, optical fiber is ubiquitously deployed throughout the world. Across oceans, you can see all the routes across the oceans, and uh, optical fiber uh, system uh, uh, in, uh, in the, in, in the U, U, U.S. And uh, right now, uh, close to one billion kilometers of fibers 
are deployed throughout the world. And I was at uh, uh, Bell Labs for approximately uh, four, 40 years, a little over 40 years. And much of these 40 years I spent in the field of optical uh, communications. And starting at the old home, home Dell, then in um, 1962, we moved to Crawford Hill, and Crawford Hill is still uh, uh, very, uh, is still uh, buzzing with, with uh, all sorts of research activities in the wireless field and in the optical uh, field. So I will uh, cover uh, the 1960s, which is a post-laser optical uh, communications exploration. And during those 10 years, there were uh, fundamental studies of uh, lasers, waveguide theory, free space uh, propagation, sequence and lens beam wave waveguides. We were sort of searching for the uh, best me me medium. Then, of course, in 1970, uh, Corning uh, was the first to show a low loss of fiber of approximately 20 dB per uh, kilometer. So during the uh, 70s uh, at Craw Craw Crawford Hill, we um, uh, con contributed to uh, simplified but very fundamental theory of fiber tra transmission. Uh, these people are uh, Marcuse, Gloga, and Mar Marcatili. And then the fiber char characterization me me measurement of loss and dispersion. And uh, at the same time, uh, uh, we worked on the first uh, light emitting diodes for tra transmission. The first transmission experiments and commercial systems uh, were, were not uh, powered by semiconductor lasers, but by uh, light emitting diodes, high radiance light emitting diodes built by Charlie Burris at Craw Crawford Hill. But we also worked on lasers, uh, photodiodes, we built the first uh, re re repeater ever uh, operating at this high speed of 6.3 megabits per, per second, the so-called T3 rate, uh, T2 rate. And um, uh, then we also performed systems experiments. In the 1980s, uh, the uh, wave wavelength of operation shifted from 0.8 to uh, 1.3 and 1.5 uh, microns, so we were involved in long wavelength components and systems, and we uh, also we uh, studied both theoretically and experimentally fiber dispersion and non-linear non e effects, and we uh, competed with other labs on hero experiments. We were planting flags on, on speed and distance. And um, we also ventured into co coherent systems, and then we, and then we uh, left it. I will uh, comment on, on that. Then the fiber uh, amplifier, the EDFA, the erbium doped fiber amplifier came along, and we recognized immediately, and that can enable uh, wavelength division multiplexing. So we uh, turned off our work on co coherent systems and launched into um, e EDFA uh, WDM uh, systems be before the rest of the world woke up. And uh, the, uh, in the 90s, indeed, uh, we, uh, were, we helped the uh, development or organizations to uh, develop, manufacture, and introduce the first WDM systems. Now, be, because of WDM systems, we are able to uh, have the, in, the internet as we know it today. Then in 96, uh, when the uh, first WDM system was deployed, um, then there were uh, uh, Lucent Technologies uh, was uh, divested from AT&T. And the Bell Labs went to Lucent, AT&T established an AT&T Labs, and now the um, uh, Bell Labs still exists, but it's a vestige 
of, of the old Bell, Bell Labs. It is in, involved mostly in systems work. And I will, uh, uh, you can read this faster than I can uh, say them. So it's a detailed uh, chronicle of some of the major e events. And so early 70s, when uh, uh, the first uh, low-loss fiber was uh, announced, we were involved in the realization of first semiconductor lasers and high radiance light emitting diodes, then the simplified theory, as I mentioned, and then uh, uh, and at uh, Murray Hill, uh, there was the disclosure of the modified chemical vapor deposition system, a uh, commercial system for pr producing low loss uh, fibers. Corning had its own, it's the so called the OVD, the outside vapor deposition, and the Japanese had a vertical uh, 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 de uh, uh, deposition uh, system. Then the first uh, experimental system trial, this was uh, developed by our development p p people with our uh, uh, participation, and the, uh, the field, first field trial at operating at 45 megabits in, in Chicago, and the commercial, first commercial uh, system at the end of that uh, decade. You, you note that it was operating all with gallium arsenide uh, devices at 0.8 uh, microns. Now, the first source ever used for uh, optical fiber transmission is the, uh, the high radiance, uh, the, the aluminum gallium arsenide uh, LED uh, operating at 0.8 microns. It was built by Charlie Burris, uh, one of a kind person at, at Crawford Hill. In fact, he had made LEDs, not only for research, but for the first uh, field trials and uh, first field trial in, in Chicago e even. So th this is the uh, con con configuration, you can see the fiber is vertically epoxied onto the e e emission uh, area here, and it can put about uh, 0.1 milliwatt into a multi-mode fiber with, you can mo modulate it at 50 uh, megahertz. And this is the uh, first uh, optical fiber repeater ever built by man or woman. It, it, it happens that it was built by two men in my uh, department. Jim Gold and Willis Muska operated, as you can see here, um, did I say about the uh, bit rate? Yes. Uh, operated at 6.3 megabits, 0.85 microns, using a silicon APD and the Burr's high radiance uh, LED. The receiver sensitivity was almost a, a, a record. And th this is terrific. Minus 62 d dBm equivalent to 200 photons per bit. Then this was followed by uh, the first uh, light wave system uh, uh, trial at, in, in at Atlanta con con consisting of uh, uh, fibers in cable ducts under a parking lot in, in at Atlanta uh, with uh, repeaters at, at, at the, 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 these points. Uh, these are tra transmitters, re receivers, fibers uh, going out. And so uh, it was also, also uh, operating at 0.82 mi microns, 45 uh, me me uh, megabits. When it was successful, it was followed by uh, commercial uh, systems. Then in the next uh, century, the wavelength of operation shifted to the so-called long wavelength region of 1.3, 1.5 mi microns, where the loss had dropped from about 0.4 dB per kilometer to uh, close to uh, 0.2 dB per 
a, a, a kilometer. So we had helped the development people in uh, implementing the first trial of the so-called long wavelength uh, system at 1.3 uh, mi mi microns, followed by in, uh, in, in three years, uh, the deployed deployment uh, of a co commercial uh, system uh, on the Northeast Corridor, going from Boston down to New, New York, eventually down to uh, wa wa Washington. So while this was going on uh, at re research, we started to do uh, uh, a co coherent uh, system. As I mentioned, it started in 84, but we ended it uh, in um, a, a, a 88. I regard this as a di digression, but we learned some, something from, from, from it. And I will uh, cover this. And um, then uh, in 86, uh, there was the first uh, high speed uh, system at that time, 1.7 uh, gigabits per, per, per second, operating at both 1.3 and 1.5 microns. It was called FT Series G. And at the same time, we launched into a, uh, uh, quote, high speed, unquote, uh, system at eight gigabits per, per, per second. So uh, during those, those days, if you want to increase the capacity of transmission, you go to higher speeds. And this is a fairly expensive proposition because you have to develop uh, high speed electronics. So we, uh, at the time, we were really working on uh, the la lasers, the photodiodes, and showing that uh, uh, the, the, at least the ph photonic devices will work at uh, high speed. And we were very successful, but the end, at the end of the pro project, and AT&T told us, well, thank you very much. We, we will shelve, shelve it for the time being because we don't need an increase of uh, increased speed by a factor four from, what, from roughly two gigabits to eight. Now, now that was a disappointment to, to us and to our, our, our management. Fortunately, the EDFA came, came, came along, so we started the WDM. Now, WDM is a flexible system. You can increase the capacity by a factor of one, by two, by three, just plug in boards for, for, for the different way. And AT&T network planning people heard this. They just loved us. They, they almost en, en, en embraced us. So I'll, I'll have more to say about that. So a little di digression into something that we, uh, uh, we were, we, we had terrific fun. Uh, and it started by our manager, managers uh, hearing that the Japanese are, are doing this. They came back to the holy smoke, the Japanese are doing co coherent systems. Why are you not? Why not? I said, if you want us to do it, we'll, 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 we'll do it. It's not a big deal. I mean, I've been in, in, in radio and microwave for, for, for years, and every single microwave system is a co coherent system. So we immediately took, uh, I forgot the name, name, name of the books, uh, to just look at the, the, uh, the sensitivity of the receivers. We converted into, uh, into four photons per, per bit. Then we went, we went around Bell Labs uh, giving talks and educating the physicists on co coherent systems, where, which is very fundamental to the uh, electrical en engineers. And converting it for, to ASK, PSK, uh, and uh, uh, DPSK, this is F F FSK, frequency shift keying. Uh, the, the upper uh, numbers are theoretical numbers, and the yellow numbers are what we, we, we were able to, to do. As, as you see, uh, the uh, Johnson noise made this thing very uh, difficult at ASK. But under co coherent systems, uh, we were a able to do much uh, uh, better. A, a three, 3 dB uh, difference here. So I indeed, using coherent systems, why do we do, to do that? is to increase the sensitivity, and indeed we, we, we could do it. And so there was a great deal of activities. This, this, this is a scoreboard I, I, I kept. 
And you can see the second car column. We were competing, AT&T competing with NEC, with uh, British Telecom. Then la la later on, the British people dropped out. And so we were basically competing with the Japanese. And uh, the, uh, mo uh, how we mo modulated and the, the sensitivity, we were able to achieve the length of five uh, fibers and the BL pro pro products. So these are the record num numbers. Okay. So while we were doing this, the e EDFA came, came along. So we immediately recognized that if we use the EDFA as the pre-amplifier, we, we, we can beat these, these numbers. So, so there's no point uh, having the, uh, going through the, the troubles of polarization and uh, po polarization diversity and the, having a, um, uh, um, a local oscillator at the re re receiver. We would just you, you use an amplifiers to increase the sensitivity. The second thing is that with the amplifier, we can have WDM. So immediately we stopped our work. The, 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 this was in my department. While the rest of the world was still going on with, with, with this. And during dinner time, I'll, 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 I'll tell this story how other people were still going on. We've quit. And people thought, they defeated us. We're no, no longer in the field. But after two years, they say, why are you not doing this work? And we say, well, we've, we, we've quit this work. We're on to something. So this would, would teach all of us a, a lesson that you should not be dogged in doing what, what you're doing. You, you should be awake and seeing what new technologies have spouted and uh, how it can be um, uh, the deployed to increase the capacity, to increase the uh, sensitivity. So it's very good for one to every now and then to plot a chart like, like, like this and to put your system, you know, the competitive systems and uh, the other on it and, and, and think about it. You, you, you want to look at it, think about it when you're brushing your teeth, you still have the image of, 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 of this chart. While you're sleeping, perhaps you, when you have a dream, you want to dream about this. And this will give you a street strategic approach to what you're, you're, you're doing. So th th this is more than just uh, uh, co coherent systems versus EDFAs, but it's also the optoelectronic integration ver 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 versus hybrid systems of PIN before we were doing uh, integrated uh, receiver front ends of PIN FETs. But in the meantime, you can always uh, sort of flip chip bond like uh, what, uh, 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 what was it, Keith, Keith you were t t telling me about flip chip bond, Bob Bonnie, his, his pioneering con con contributions, which is a hybrid way of of integrating the, the devices onto, onto your, your chip. And economically, that could pre, pre, prevail for a, a, a long time. And besides, if you look at it, the performance of OEICs is always a little bit worse than the hybrid uh, approach. So th this should teach you something about uh, what you uh, maybe doggedly per pursuing that, that, that is optoelectronic integration receiver front for, for ends. But now there are lots of optoelectronically integrated front for end, but it's for arrays, not for single uh, channels. And here you can see that the uh, receiver uh, sensitivity of uh, e e EDFA preamps uh, can compete well with uh, uh, with uh, uh, co coherent uh, systems. So EDFAs operate. Th this is a God-given thing. Uh, God has, has given to us EDFAs that operate at the loss 
minimum of five uh, fibers. How can you be more? Uh, how can you be luckier than that? Than, than, than that? So WDM systems will sit uh, in the trough here very well, and um, so uh, uh, th th this is a uh, and, and, uh, a, a his historic uh, slide I, I, I made, and. So what, what is a WDM system? I don't need to, I don't want to preach to the choir here, but I just want to show you how uh, somebody who uh, doesn't know much about optical fiber trion transmission, look at this uh, slide, would understand immediately why one should use WDM. And here in the traditional system of one channel per fiber for a uh, 40 gigabit uh, capacity system. You need 16 fi fibers, uh, each one uh, operating at two and a half uh, gigabits. With that many digital re re repeaters on, on, on the way. But when you switch to an uh, optical fiber uh, amplifier and enabled WDM uh, system, you have such a simple one. You, you, you need a multiplexer here, which is an um, in, in integrated optics uh, a, a device. Potentially, it can be uh, very cost effective. And you only need, perhaps, uh, over this uh, distance, uh, uh, about uh, uh, three times less, because the repeater space in here uh, is around, four, uh, around 25 miles. And here, with the amplifiers, it can be uh, roughly three times that. And furthermore, each amplifier uh, can amplify all the wavelengths. And so each one of these may, may cost uh, the e equivalent of a Cadillac, OK? Um, quite a few tens of uh, uh, kilobucks. And this one may, may cost a, uh, somewhat less than a, a Rolls, Rolls Royce. But you can just add up the Cadillacs here and add up the Rolls Royces here. The WDM uh, system really wins. Now, furthermore, you can add channels uh, one by one at a time as your traffic uh, grows. Uh, and now, uh, we can uh, do 100 wavelengths, each one going at 100 gigabits per channel. So this is a system is capable of 10 terabits per second throughput. So a little bit about the, uh, um, what I call the managed innovation of the WDM uh, system. Uh, at, at Bell Labs, I, I, I believe, we were the first to launch into a very large commercial um, and, and, and endeavor in developing a WDM system, which we call the next generation uh, light wave ne network. Uh, at the time, it was a classified uh, ne uh, name for our pro project, NGLL, and we were for, for, forbidden to go out and, and we, we could talk about WDM, but we could, we could not talk, talk about uh, what we were doing. So I, uh, I say that the, it was a uh, WDM revolution. And uh, these words, OK, uh, I, as I re re remembered, it was an AT&T company-wide. So it was a very large pro 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 project. It was large scale, and its grassroots generated and managed. In, indeed, it was generated by, by, by us, the, the, the workers. The, the management didn't know, know about, uh, well, uh, didn't in, initiate. In fact, we had to convince the management to fund this pro, pro project. Because the management, up till then, uh, only understood that uh, in, to increase the capacity you increase the speed. So um, it was uh, grassroots uh, generated and management innovation program for 
uh, not just research, but for developing a WDM transmission. Now, the, the uh, important thing is the word concurrent. Uh, heretofore, the projects I was involved was more or less done in, in serial. It was done in research first, then went to uh, development, then went to manufacture, then in, in installation. But we had the involvement of research, development, production, and network planning all at the same time. And we, we held this so-called working group me meetings uh, every uh, a couple of weeks. And we had people from all of these uh, cross-area uh, low management pe pe people participating. So, so it was done in parallel in, instead of in, 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 in series. And this pro project was in, initiated in 1988, before anybody else uh, in the world. And it was pr proposed by uh, the Lightwave Systems Research Department, that, that, that is my uh, department. We were, at the time, we were uh, only a few who were very enthusiastic about this, but soon we, we con convinced the rest of the people. And the buy-in was not con company-wide at first, because they didn't want to change what they were doing. That, that, that is high speed. But, you know, at Bell Labs, there were, there, there were mostly smart people, if, 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 if not all very, very smart. You, you, you just explain it to most of them once, and some of them you, you, you have to explain to, to them twice. But they, 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 they understood, and they uh, join in very enthusiastically. So we formed uh, topical uh, uh, groups uh, doing... Uh, a, 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 addressing various issues, the amplifier, now you have to stabilize the wavelength, then you, you have to work on a multiplexer, now because the distances are long, we need to worry about dispersion, we need to worry about external modulation and network re re reliability. And we have different groups, working groups, who we're, were working on these various things, and we met every uh, a couple of weeks or three, three, three weeks to report to each other the pro pro progress. And in the meantime, there was a field trial at the Roaring Creek in Pennsylvania to demonstrate that it can be done and it was very successful. And the networking, uh, the network planning uh, people had done a simulation study that they found there was a huge economic savings could to be had billions of dollars. So that generated a great deal of enthusiasm uh, in the AT&T ma ma management. So they started funding uh, in 1992 nine, and uh, started to manufacture f prototypes. And um, uh, then there was in, in home, home dollars, in, in one of the buildings, a whole floor was de devoted to uh, uh, the uh, testing of the equipment. And the first a WDM system was installed in uh, 95, followed by a massive uh, deployment, 96. By that time, AT&T and AT&T divested, lo 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 loosened. And I really believe that WDM revolutionized the optical fiber communications in, in, in industry and facilitated the internet growth because the, uh, the flexibility of growth, or, or, or to, to use the word in telecom is scalability. You can scale flexibly with uh, optical amplifier enabled WDM uh, systems. Uh, furthermore, you can uh, very um, cost effectively um, manage the tra traffic, and we propose the, this passive WDM ad drop for, formerly, we, we used electronic airdrop, very ex expensive. Uh, but uh, now we, we, we could use, by you, you using just a, a, a couple of wavelength multiplexers, you can uh, drop, add ch channels, and let uh, through uh, uh, channels going, going through here. So we can, uh, by doing that, we use the, not the high speed, electronics as in the uh, 
legacy systems with its write speed and uh, with enhanced reliability because these are passive the devices and for furthermore uh, low cost. So uh, during and after the di di divestiture, uh, DARPA funded a, a, uh, a pro pro project called Monet, which represents multi-wavelength optical networks. And if you change the T to Y, you can understand uh, uh, the enthusiasm uh, of uh, all these companies who want to be in, in involved. Uh, principally, it was um, uh, managed by Belcor at the time. Belcor was looking for funding, so they came to, uh, to Bell Labs and said, do you people want to be involved? And DARPA specified that the telephone companies be in involved. So you can see that uh, all the pa participants are uh, uh, telephone companies, Bell Atlantic, Bell South, um, uh, Pacific uh, Telesis, and South Western Bell, and of course, Lu Lucent, con consisting of the old Bell Labs people, and AT&T was, was involved. And it's a lot of m m money, $50 million. Uh, dollars. And it was to demonstrate the technical and practical feasibility of a key word here is reconfigurable and capacity scalable, transparent, wavelength ro 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 rooted networks. This, is, this was something that we were going to do anyway at at and t but well, we're, we're very happy to uh, part, part, participate. So, uh, so the goal, of course, to pro pro provide a virtualized private network for the uh, government. The, the, the key uh, device here is uh, a reconfigurable optical airdrop mu multiplexer. Here. The, it's called the Rodem. And this was like the fixed uh, airdrop multiplexer that I had showed uh, two, two slides er earlier, but with uh, wavelength selective switches here. So it can switch uh, some of the channels going through fiber one, for, for example, to, uh, to, to different fi fibers here. So it can switch, it can add and, 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 and drop. So the Rodem now is a uh, billion dollar Industry. It, it, it you, you, you uses MEMS switches and uh, liquid crystal uh, sw switches for switching. And uh, practically every node uh, has at least uh, several of, of, of these. And, uh, and it can uh, pr 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 provision the channels and pr provide uh, restoration. And uh, this is a slide that I've gotten from my um, AT&T friend, uh, Keith uh, Ca Ca Cameron, uh, several years ago when he gave a talk at o o o OFC. And you can see the, uh, the rodents being de deployed here, in a, uh, here for Metro ne 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 Network. And every single node, all these light blue bar boxes are OADMs. The, the, the non-light blue boxes are all electronic uh, switches or uh, routers. Okay, so you can see how, uh, what a key role that the ro 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 rodents play in a metro systems and also, of course, in, in the core ne ne network of long uh, distance systems. Now I will wind up by uh, say uh, a few uh, words about uh, the pro progress. As you can see here, over uh, 25 years or so, the bit rate per channel has uh, increased uh, for re research from uh, a few gigabits per, per second uh, to uh, almost uh, 10 terabits per, 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 per second. And with WDM uh, systems in research, it followed this, this uh, uh, 
red ones to uh, uh, 10 uh, uh, to 100 uh, terabits per, per, per second, multi-channel. So this rapid rise is due to WDM, as I mentioned. Now, what can contribute it? This jump here. And in, in, in future, uh, the uh, channels, the uh, capacity uh, e exceeding uh, hundreds of terabits per, per second. It's the convergence of radio and optical technologies. The, the optical people have learned uh, the tricks that the radio, the, the wireless people use to increase their capacities, to make more ro robust their cha channels. All the uh, signal, electronic signal uh, processing technologies like uh, OFDM, uh, like F FEC, uh, like MIMO. So I say that over 25 years, the capacity has increased by almost five orders of magnitude. It's a little over a factor of 100 in 10 years. That's pretty amazing. Now we have to go back to, to the fundament, fundamentals, just like the wireless people had done. We have to go back and look at the uh, capacity um, limit, okay, and look at Shannon, uh, what, what, what Shannon had uh, taught, taught, taught us. Shannon's uh, capacity, his main four formula, says the channel capacity is equal to the bandwidth times log to the base two of basically signal to no noise ratio. So we want to increase C over B, or the spectral efficiency, just as the wireless people. Uh, have, have, have done year, years ago. Now, we lo look at this, uh, uh, we say, well, we can increase the signal to noise ra ra ratio, and so it will, uh, it, the capacity will increase without uh, limit. That's wonderful, e e except on, 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 unless, uh, uh, on, unlike uh, the uh, ether, Optical fiber uh, ex exhibits nonlinearity. So, if you uh, uh, take into account uh, cross phase mo mo modulation, for, 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 for example, you'll find that the uh, spectral efficiency doesn't increase without limit, but will top out. And this is for uh, d d different uh, con constellations uh, with uh, N rings, uh, of, uh, which is A ASK and N uh, P PSK. So with these, they, they will top out uh, uh, here. So what can we do then? Okay, we can um, do uh, polarization, uh, multiplexing, two, two, two as a factor of two. We can do um, time division multiplexing by increasing the bit rate. We can, uh, uh, we, we can use uh, phase, okay, or, 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 or frequency. What, what do we do? So, so in, in increasing, so I go, in, uh, go, go back and l look at the, the various means. First, we like our wire, wireless car, car colleagues, we can use advanced modulation tech, techniques for uh, enhancing spectral efficiency. Go to Q, QPSK, QAM, as, 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 et cetera. Then we also follow their example of going to uh, co coherent techniques, which en enable the de detection of multi-level uh, modul modulation, and this will also enhance receiver sensitivity without increasing the power, and, and, and uh, also 
this was en enabled by electronic signal processing because you can use uh, this uh, using e electronic signal pro processing, you don't need to really stabilize the uh, wavelength of the uh, local oscillator. Then you can use e electronic signal pro pro processing for uh, mitigating uh, uh, signal de degradation due to di di dispersion, noise, crosstalk, etc. Just like our wire wireless people, our wireless co uh, colleagues do. How, how do we do uh, some of these things? We use photonic integrated circuits. We're able to uh, uh, fa fa fabricate uh, optical circuitry uh, for, the, for the complicated, uh, sophisticated transmitters and re receivers on a single chip, uh, so, 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 such as on, uh, on indium gallium arsenide phosphide or silicon now. Then there's the opportunity of sp spatial uh, multiplexing. I, I, I have a, a couple of slides on, on that. That's the, one of the hottest field uh, in um, optical tra tra transmission. This spatial multiplexing means multi-core, several cores in a single fi fiber, and multi-mode in a, in a, in a, in a single uh, core in a single fiber. So instead of single mode fibers, we use multi-mode fibers. Now, how, what happened? Um, crosstalk, just like uh, our wireless co colleagues, we, we, we use MIMO. Multiple input, multiple output. So here is, for, 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 for example, an example of a single fiber, single fiber with uh, five cores, and each core uh, could be uh, four, four modes, okay? And each mode uh, could be uh, dual polarization. So each fi fiber would, would, would have eight of, of this. Then you add wavelength multiplexing, and, and you literally can tra tra transmit petabytes uh, 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 petabits of uh, de de data in one uh, fiber. So uh, this is a very uh, hot field now. So, so some of the experiments going on. Uh, this is work going on at Bell Labs at Craw Crawford Hill by our good good friend uh, Ganauk, Alan uh, Ganauk, involving um, uh, one, six different uh, 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 fi fibers, I mean, uh, six different modes in, in, in a single uh, fi fiber. So uh, the, uh, uh, what, what is the innovation here? The innovation is the, 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 the coupler. How do you couple each one of the modes, uh, uh, each one of the channels into each one of the modes? So this is a, a demonstration by our friends at uh, Crawford Hill and uh, at AT&T Labs, where uh, uh, I uh, retired from. I, I, I get my pension, by, by, by the way, from AT&T, uh, not, not from Al Al Alcatel Lu Lucent. Um, so at AT&T Labs, they also do uh, systems work. And here is a demonstration of a fiber with uh, seven cores, and they use uh, uh, OFDM, or, or, or orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, and 32 uh, QAM to demonstrate a tra tra transmission of 1.12 uh, terabits uh, with uh, 8.6 bits per second per hertz uh, uh, spectral e efficiency. That, that is a re record. So the, these are some of the exciting things going on. Now, final two slides. Uh, let me con uh, conclude. And I uh, reckon that AT&T Bell Labs was regarded 
as the foremost, not one of the four foremost, the foremost, foremost in, in industrial lab in the world. And if any one of you disagree, we can talk about it uh, af af afterwards. And I'm sure I don't, I don't need to say much, but some, some of my good friends who are expelled by lab labbers will, will speak, speak for, for, for me. And it was indeed regarded as a national tre treasure. I've, I've heard these uh, words being, being used. Why did it thrive? First of, first of all, AT&T was a vertically in, in integrated car company. From manufacturing to providing service. And, and it, it, you know, uh, I'm not ashamed to say it. It was, it en enjoyed monopoly business status. The government granted it uh, monopoly status. So it uh, had to uh, behave properly. And indeed, at and tried very hard to uh, behave pro properly so that it would thr thrive, it would make money, it, will, it would also look after the in interest of the uh, country and, and the industry. And so why this is so? Well, as a, there's a wide range of com communications related b b business and it's, it's very nice. It's, it's self-supplier and customer chain. You manufacture it, then you sell it to, 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 to yourself. Okay. The, the, the money is, uh, is exchanged uh, inside the company. It had a very deep pocket. Lots of people making telephone call, calls. Therefore, it could have a long-term view. That is what's lacking now in practically all of the uh, in, in industry. And best of all, there was no competition. Okay. So if you look at all, all, all these, no, I claim that no such in institution a, a exists in, in the world. Even N NTT in, in, in Japan. Or look at the companies in, in China or in, in Europe. There's no such company like that. Nevertheless, my final slide, I say that the strategic research and in innovation in my field are still vigorously pursued worldwide, not, not only at the Bell Labs of to today or AT&T Labs or NTT Labs. However, looking at the work being done, the Crawford Hill Labs uh, of Bell Labs of Alcatel Lucent has succeeded in maintaining its leadership position in the world. That's my private o o o o o o opinion, and if you want to argue about it, uh, I'll see you at the reception. Thank you very much. <laughs>